Hello everybody, this is Street Gamer back to kick off round three for Group H. Ooh, some pivotal matches in this group here. At first, we will see Lauren Steele going up against Lapoke. A clash at the top between Blood Moon and Danix Tactile. And then we will see MEJP10 taking on Dinosaur Queen 777. Wow, this is this could be pivotal because, well, if Blood Moon wins their next match, that's pretty much Blood Moon through. If they don't, then all of a sudden, you know, this could get a bit twitchy. But eight points is a re uh, after, uh, two, after two games is a very strong start. So I fully uh, expect Blood Moon to get out of the group now at this point. But we'll just have to see if they can make it a guarantee. But, you know, that's match number two. We got match number one to get through first, which could be a big game between Lauren Steele and Lapoke. Dino Slash! But we don't need the... We just need the Awaken mode, which is on three. Yes, that's for Lauren in the red corner. It is a super para. Super para para. Let's have a look. Double check real quick. Yep, Awaken mode on three. Ah, uh, yes, Lauren finally getting her first win of this tournament up in round two, getting a good win. However, in the blue corner, full of poke, we have an Abelosaurus. The poke haven't really got going yet in this, to in this tournament. They done a pretty decent campaign last time out, getting a top eight finish. But winless so far in this tournament, and you feel like they need to get some points on the board after this match. Well... Yeah, after this match. This is going to be a tough one. It's going to be a tough match for... Well, both of our combatants are Ooh, that's a good start from the Paris. A crit off the bat. Oh, that's a tie. Ties favour Para Para, though. It does have the green impulse. Oh, that's another tie. Lauren Steele on top early on. But... Oh, it's a Dino Stuffer! Never mind, never mind. Dino Stuffer coming in. Knocking the stuffing out of the Abelosaurus. And turning him into a Christmas plushie. I guess twice. Next round will be a wake wake time. Oh, it's a tie. No green impulse, though. Interesting. Oh, it's going to get the crit this time, though. Lapoke getting their first hit of this match, and it's going to be a big one. It's a Magma Blaster, and with the rush to come, this could be Parapara Para dead? Oh, yep, yep, Parapara Para is dead. So we are not going to see the Awaken mode, which is an absolute pain in the arse. Oh, well. Ooh, now Lauren can be in a bit of a pickle here because the second dino is a Carnotaurus. And the last time this Carnotaurus faced a fire dinosaur, it, it didn't do very well. Put it that way, it got bullied by the bully Blood Moon. But, you know, this Abelosaurus isn't... I probably say it isn't as big of a threat as a T-Rex is, and it has taken quite a lashing. So, even though the Carnotaurus has a tight disadvantage, one hit might still be enough, as long as that hit is a crit. Oh, is a hit, though, from the Abelosaurus. Can Lapoke turn the screw here? Oh, look, they're relatives. They fight their relatives. Ooh, maybe not. It's an injury attack. That can be just what Lauren needs to get back in this match. Even with a tight disadvantage? Yeah, this should kill the Abelosaurus. Yeah, no surprise here. Carnotaurus packs a lot of power. Right then, as for Lapoke's second dino, it's a Sejuangosaurus, the purple predator. Can it, can it get the jump on the Carnotaurus? This could be a long match here because <laughs> they both got dino illusion here. Well, I suspect the Sejuang will get it triggered and maybe the Carno not as much. Just have to see how things go. You never know. Oh, it's a crit from the Sejuang! That crit from the Carno could do, would do major damage to that Sejuangosaurus. So Lapoke needs to make sure that Lauren does not get off a crit. Oh, well, um, there goes that idea out the window. Carnotaurus striking back with another ninja attack. Oh, 
Oh. <laughs> wow. Like, put it in perspective, this, this Carnotaurus is attack type, by the way. It has an insanely powerful crit. And I'd probably say if that was Hurricane Beat, that Sejuanosaurus probably would have died. <laughs> would have been a one shot. Massive damage done by the Carno. Oh my god, another ninja attack. Well, it doesn't really matter because the Sejuangosaurus is going down and surprisingly, we have not seen a Dino Illusion, which is a big surprise. Need to wet my wish up. Alright then, as for the Pope's third Dino, it's an Apatosaurus. From having the early lead, Lepoke might be in a bit of a pickle here. Lawrence Steele looking quite strong in this match yet again. I think it was just the first matchup that she, she got up, up, utterly annihilated by Blood Moon the Bully. Yes, yes, I bet, I bet she would have a rematch with Blood Moon. Beat him into the dirt. But sadly, you're not having a rematch. Well, you might have a rematch. You never know. It could be a Lawrence Steele and Blood Moon in the final. You never know. Is that well? It should be Carnotaurus dead. Yeah. Oh, God bless it. The Carnotaurus dies, and we are level pet in. Okay then. As for Lawrence food and final Dino, it is a fairy. So we're going to see a clash of the secret dinosaurs. I don't know if these two actually met during the secret showdown tournament. They, I suspect they probably did. I mean, there was well, there was really four fairies in that tournament. <laughs> The odds are, wouldn't they probably net? Ooh, a tie. Ties, from the looks of it, favour the fairy. Ooh, that will definitely favour the fairy. It's a backslap. A Patasaurus has been damaged. Ooh, the secret move has been triggered as well. Will Lawrence get that off? The answer to that is yes! It's a Gyro Claw! And this is going to shred the Apatosaurus and, well, guarantee Lawrence Steele at least a losing bonus point should she lose this match. But it doesn't look like she's going to be losing now, although the Apatosaurus' secret move has been triggered. Ooh, the poke could get it off. Oh, they have it a tie! And Natai finishes off the Apatosaurus and gives Lawrence Steele the win. Oof. Well, that was in in exciting, wasn't it? Pete did a bit out in the end for Lepoke, but now I actually think Lepoke's in real trouble now. Three straight defeats in this tournament so far, yet to get going. As for Lawrence Steele... Bouncing back strong after a disappointing opening match against the Bully Blood Moon. Well, speaking of the devil, guess who's up next? It is a clash at the top between Danix Tactile and the Bully Blood Moon. Well, based on all of his matches so far in this tournament, I'm expecting this to be a relatively short match. In the red corner, for our Bully Blood Moon, we have a Tyrannosaurus, and yes, I only say Blood Moon, it's, it's like a nickname, it's Blood Moon the Bully, because... So far, he's bullied his opponents into submission in the first two matches. Will it work against Danex Tactile? We'll just have to see. Danex Tactile, a tough customer yet, in the blue corner with an Uluru Titan. Danex Tactile bouncing back after a disappointing loss in round one. Bouncing back in style, I should say. Getting a good win over Dinosaur Queen 777. But. Blood Moon will be, a t will be his toughest test yet, because this T-Rex has been mightily impressive. And as I said, it's basically bullied its opponents. Oh, well, random number generate is deciding to be a bully now. Okay, so we got Rock and... Ooh, Blood Moon. Unsurprisingly, getting the first hit. Yeah, sorry about that, took a while actually. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes I'll do that. My Ethernet cable will just stop connecting to the internet. Like, I don't know where... They probably need a new one, to be honest. I've had it for a year or so. Oh, it's a tie. Um, oh, yeah, I'd probably say Ty's favour the Uluru Titan. I do believe it has green impulse. Ooh, is another tie. 
can blood wound get off well the Ulua Titan getting a hit there this T-Rex finally take well in fairness I think Lauren played pretty well against in the first match with Supercars and then it's just the Carnotaurus that got swept aside but this T-Rex now has all its moves triggered but can't seem to get any so far only the one hit Ulua Titan holding its own Oh, um, well, it was holding its own, until Blazing Spin Attack happened. And, once again, I think Blood Moon's going to be having a 1-0 lead. Oh, no! The Uru Titan survived! But, yep, yeah, all of a sudden, look at that. One crit from the T-Rex does major damage, but, but, it's a crit from the Uru Titan. And this, I think, will kill the T-Rex. So Blood Moon will not be having a 1-0 lead this time. We might actually get to see his third dino for a change. Yeah, the T-Rex is going down. Well, Blood Moon finally being tested in this tournament. Now we'll get a now we'll get a proper test of his team's nerve. As up next is a Baryonyx. Nothing fancy, just the regular Baryonyx. Near full tilt, but not kind of full tilt. Like about 80% full tilt. This Uluwa Titan though has fared pretty well. Well, the Uluwa Titan did his job. It killed the T-Rex. The biggest threat from Team Blood Moon has already been dispatched. So Danex Tactile, I would probably say it. Hmm. Well, he's got rid of the T-Rex, but now he's got to face a tight disadvantage against the Barry with this Yangchungosaurus. So, not out of the woods yet, Danek Stachtel, not out of the woods yet, but at least he got rid of the T-Rex early and prevented Blood Moon from landing too many hits with it. So, no, there's a saving grace. But now Blood Moon does have the upper hand, though, because of the Barry. Oh, it's an Aqua Whip. Oh dear, if there ain't one thing on Blood Moon's team, it's the other one. <laughs> the T-Rex doesn't do as much as it has done so far. The Barry is going to do it all. <laughs> Can this Yang Chungasaurus strike back for Danex Tacto? So far, no. Although, ties do favour the Yang. Ooh, it gets... Well, it's not going to do that much damage. Because, of, again, the type disadvantage. But, at least it's a hit. And yes, on the topic of Yang Chungasaurus, somebody might be making it for Jurassic World Evolution. Yes, but will it be for number one or number two? Maybe it'll be both. <laughs> oh, I'm such a tease, aren't I? No, I actually, yesterday, I actually finished, I actually finished one of the uh, mod, new mods for the next showcase. It took about two weeks to, I actually had time to do it. And I've actually been having time to do make mods again, which is awesome. For those of you that thought that mod making in Jurassic World Evolution 1 was dead, you are wrong. And, well, for those of you that thought the Baryonyx would give Blood Moon a 2-1 lead, you are wrong. And for the first time in this tournament, it's Blood Moon's third dino, the Uteraptor. And now all of a sudden, Blood Moon's got a tight disadvantage. Can Danex Tactile get a bonus point win? That would definitely open up Group H. Although, I should point out, a win for Blood Moon would probably, well, would be enough to take him through, I would say. But, so far, he's not getting a win. Oh, it's a tie. But again, ties favour the Yang. Oh, that's going to favour it. Oh, it's a crit block as well. Oh, Blood Moon in a bit of a pickle for the first time in this tournament. There's the crit block. Which means that the Yang Chungasaurus will be going rock. And the Uteraptor will not be going paper. You can't go paper, you gotta go scissors. Ooh, Danix Tactor guaranteeing himself a losing bonus point. But at this rate, I think he's gonna be getting a bonus point win. Blood Moon the Bully finally getting beaten. No, that's a bit that's a bit unfair, you know. They did it all right in this matchup, but the Yang Chungasaurus enables Danix Tactile to turn the screw. 
Danix Tactile looking really strong after a poor start. Getting a bonus point win over the leader's Blood Moon. Well, Blood Moon's winning start ended there, but yeah, I think I think we all know why. It was basically because the T-Rex did basically nothing. I mean, if that T-Rex had got off a crit on the Yang, then that probably would have put Blood Moon back in the driving seat. But nope, Danix Tactile getting a crucial, could, what could be a crucial win going forward in this tournament. And I should point out that it is important to finish, like, it is important to finish as high as you can in the group because that will, uh, in theory, I should say, give you an easier matchup in the knockout rounds. Mm -mm -mm. So basically, if you finish first, you will pretty well. You will one hundred percent avoid anyone else in their respective groups that finished first or second. Just, just a little bit of FYI for you all for all your informations. But yes, that does mean that Danix Tactile will. Well, after after check the table at the end of the session, but I think Danix Tactile will be leading Group H now, or maybe it'll be Lauren. Just have to see. But anyway. Enough about that matchup. Let's move on to the final match of this session, which is quite a big game between MEJP10 and Dinosaur Queen 777. Okay then, in the red corner for MEJP10 is an Alpha Kendrosaurus. MEJP10 kind of got a bit of a beating against Lauren in the second round, after getting a big win against Danix Tactile in the first. Can MEJP10 get back to that winning start? It'll be tough because in the blue corner for Dinosaur Queen 777, we have the Alpha Sukumimus. One of my personal favourite Alpha Dinosaurs, I like, and one I was tempted about using in, my in this tournament, to be honest. I like it. Can Dinosaur Queen 777 get back to winning ways after a loss in round two? In fact, both of these two lost in round two and one in round one. A win here could be crucial for either of our two combatants here in their chances of getting out of this group. Which is proven to be a very tight group, so every point is going to count. Ooh, the Kentosaurus gets the first hit though. Oh, we, we got a clash of alpha dinosaurs. Landing the poison as well. And a bit of tie bomb. Oh, there's a crit from the Suko, and the Suko has quite a big crit. Look at that. Big damage done, but, eh, but the Kentosaurus does have the slight lead. Oh, it's a tie. Ties will favour the Kentra, though. Look at that, the tie bomb going off there. Quite useful, that tie bomb. Oh, another tie. And another tie. And another tie. And that tie will take out the Suko. MEJP10 has a 1-0 lead. But it is quite a slight lead. Right then. As for Dinosaur Queen's second dinosaur. It is a Super Taurosaurus. And I hope for the love of hope. That we get to see the Awaken mode. Because screenshotting this bloody thing. Is a pain in the arse. Okay. The Awaken mode on free. Hopefully we'll see it. It does have the type disadvantage against the Kentro, but the Kentro is on such low health, I don't think it's going to matter unless said Kentro gets a hit. Oh, and it won't. The Taurosaurus getting a hit there. Oh, are you serious? It didn't kill it! I, I forget because Taurosaurus' power is all in the crypt, so his other two moves are quite feeble. And the fact there's a lightning move. Oh, how costly could it be? How costly could that be? It's a Quake Saber. This, unlike Taurosaurus' attack, is going to do damage. Oh, look at that! And a tie bomb! Okay, that's twice. Going to need that Awaken mode now. Oh, it's a tie! The tie bomb's going off! Oh, okay, the tie bomb wouldn't have killed it anyway, but... Dinosaur Queen 777, even in the score, but MEJP10 have a sizable lead. Alright, as for any second dino, is a Pentaceratops. Well, we've definitely seen plenty of this thing in this tournament, haven't we? But 
orange five horned beast. Can it can it give MEGP10 a what two one lead? Or can Dinosaur Queen pull it back? Oh big could this be? Oh, this is well this is gonna do some damage because it's a lightning strike and it's on a crit. And it's awakening time next. Nothing to lose now for the Taurosaurus. And thank goodness for that, I get to do a screenshot. Two. Oh, I didn't get the hit though. Hang on, I, I know, I know. I'm waiting for the right time to get a screenshot. There. <laughs> I was waiting for it to go down on one so it'd be easier to screenshot the Tauros. Look at that, it's an atomic bomb. It's probably going to kill it. Yeah. Chance missed for Dinosaur Queen there, but the third dino is the powerhouse itself, the green-eyed Allosaurus relative, the Sorophagonax. I got away with words, haven't I? Dinosaur Queen, well, he's been playing catch up most of this throughout the whole match, but the Sorophagonax is capable of winning it for us. Oh, it's a tie. Any won't mind that, though. Chip away at that Faginax's health. Oh, there's a hit from the Faginax. Will this be enough to kill Pentaceratops? The answer to that is no. Will Dinosaur Queen come to regret that? Uh, maybe not. This firebomb will kill Pentaceratops. Dinosaur Queen even in the score. And wow, this has been such a back and forth match. Just when Emmy pulls away, Dinosaur Queen pulls back. Really intense. But this could be this could be a key matchup because this Super Barry has the tight advantage over the Soro Faginax. Double check the awaken mode real quick. And it is on three. Like three just seems to be the default for everyone. Everyone seems to just pick three. And I would agree, three is a pretty... It, this is a good number to pick. Ooh, Barry getting the first hit. It's not a water move though, so normal damage will be dealt. Because once... Ooh, Barry getting another hit. Any JP10 pulling away. Guaranteeing themselves a losing bonus point. Oh, it's a tie. Another tie. Oh, I think I think that's it for Dinosaur Queen. Maybe not yet. Oh, maybe not yet. But it is awakening time. However, Dinosaur Queen has guaranteed herself at least a losing bonus point, which I suspect is what she's going to get. Hey, at least we get to see the Awaken mode, and yes, damn it, that Hydro Cutter has been triggered. Oh! Oh, this could change everything! It's a Firebomb, and it's a Crit Blocker to come! This could change everything! Well, the health will be halved as well. Wait, what's this? Oh, it's a Volcano Burst! Is it going to kill it? Is the Barry done? Oh, it's done! <laughs> oh my god, freaking Volcano Burst! It's not supposed to do that much damage! <laughs> Never underestimate the power of Sorophagonax! Dinosaur Queen 777 snatching a win from MEJP10! Well, MEJP10, you're still getting a losing bonus point. Which you kind of deserve, because you were basically winning for most of that match. The firebomb snatching it for Dinosaur Queen. Well, that, it would have been interesting if the Volcano Burst hadn't been triggered. What would have happened? Let's see what would have, would have happened. Because the Baryonyx would have lost half his health. So a tie would have killed it. So let's see what would have happened. Three. Oh, oh, Emmy would have won it. How crucial could that Volcano Burst be? Going forward in this tournament. Because if that volcano burst on it activated. Actually, no, crit block. Oh, yeah, crit block. Crit block. So, 
the Faganex would have gone for Rock. So, yeah, it would, yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah, Dinosaur Queen would have won anyway because the first one was Scissors. Yeah, Dinosaur Queen would have won anyway. Okay, never mind. But still, a crucial volcano burst and a crucial win for Dinosaur Queen 777. All right, then. Time to update the table and we'll end the session. Well, this is interesting, isn't it? Look at Group H. Look how tight Look how tight it is at the top. You have Danix Tactile replacing Blood Moon as the group leader. Purely based on the matchup that these two just had and the fact that Danix Tactile won it. Then you have Lawrence Steele clinging on to third place there with that extra bonus point on seven points. Dinosaur Queen 777 on on six points in fourth. MEGP 10 in it in it to win it with three points. And then poor old Lepoke who's just has not got going at all on zero. And yeah, it's gonna be really difficult. For okay, let's see. So, Dinosaur Queen has to play Lauren and Blood Moon in the next two rounds. So, they're gonna, I think they're gonna need these two to do Lepoke a favor here and defeat Dinosaur Queen. Because I can't see them. Well, put it this way if, the, if these two defeat Dinosaur Queen, these two get points. You know, of course, the maximum Lepoke could get at this point is 10 points if you get two 3 0 wins. But given the fact that out of all these tournaments I've done, only one person has won 3 0. That seems very unlikely. I suppose two bonus point wins will take them up to eight. But again, you know, I suspect these two will probably get more points. These three will probably get more points. So realistically for Lepoke, I think they can aim for a best fourth place finish. Which means if that, which means Dinosaur Queen will probably be the only one they can realistically chase down. Of course, if Dinosaur Queen gets one more win, then Lepoke will be done. And who will they face? Well, it's going to be a tough match in round four. Taking on Danex Tactile. And then a big game between MEJP10 to finish. And then it will be Dinosaur Queen 777 going up against Lauren Steele in round four. Ooh, that could be... I lo I'm looking forward to that one. And then we will see... No, no, yeah, that's right. Oh, no, no. Blood Moon going up against MEJP10. So, yeah, Group H definitely looking interesting there. And if I'm honest, looking at that, I would probably say that this, this this top four will probably stay as it is, if I'm honest. And I would probably say that one of the best fourth place teams is going to come from this group. But yeah, that's going to end this session. Hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for next time, where we will conclude round three with Group I. And until then, this is Stranger Gamer, signing out.